What are you hearing in boardrooms? What's your take on what is going on with the trade story at the moment? How are companies having to react? How are they sort of rethinking their strategy? And what does that mean for M&A? We are seeing companies go to their supply chain, and, and I think they were ahead of the game on this. I think people moved a lot of supply chain in anticipation. I think that started probably a year ago. So there's been a lot of movement, and now there's um, people are trying to figure out what happens in the end game on this uh, trade war. But I think people are very confused because deep down there's a real belief that this is more than a trade war. This is this yep. is a I would say we had a hot war in the early 1900s, we had a cold war in the mid-century, and you know, I think we may be going into an extended period of a, of a code war, <laughs> where it'll be fought over different methods and terms, but the fuel of the next 200 years or 100 years of this economy is going to be control over digital uh, assets, knowledge, information, and I think that uh, who controls that information and what you're allowed to do with it at the sovereign level is going to be a big issue, and it's and it's not easily solvable through tariffs. Okay, so if I'm a company looking to do M and A, am I too early in my understanding of that process? Do I do I understand the ramifications of what you just described to make a big strategic decision? I, at the moment, it feels very tactical. Can I make strategic decisions at this point? Depends what industry you're in and how it's going to affect. So, look, I think there are certain parts of the chip industry and and, and technology that is uh, really up for debate as to whether you'll actually end up with two competing internets. I mean, there's, there's this possibility that we're going to end up putting a divide up on the information, and that you have to be careful about. Look, I think if you're developing innovative pharma, um, you know, I think you go ahead and do that transaction. Uh, there are things like that. So it really depends on what industry you're in and, and how the information flow and the cross-information flow could affect you. Looks like the Fed's going to cut in June. Oh, sorry, in July. Done with June. We're on to July. Um, we may get 50, we may get 25, but we're going to get some rate cuts this year, it looks like. What effect is that going to have? Probably already in there. I think you probably saw that start to change the whole elements of the market in you know December 24th. I, I think you look back to that October, November, December stock market, and the world had priced in a recession in 2019. Um, the Fed statement alone turned that. And so I, th I think this rate cut is probably in this market. I mean, this has been a, a pretty dramatic change. I think it's 10, 15 percent change since the bottom on the anticipation. So I, th I think it's in there. I think the uh, the market's operating as as if that that has happened. You're here in Europe. Does Europe I, the European M and A market looks flat on its back right now? <laughs> is that I, you're smiling? But is that the correct assessment? Yeah, Europe. Is when, when is it going to change? <laughs> I'm here, so I have to be nice to everybody. Okay. But Europe's, be hard. Nice. Europe's hard to figure out on a, on a good day how to, uh, you know, how to think about M and A cross uh, cross nations, um, et cetera. So it's always very hard. And then I think you throw Brexit and the underlying elections that, that are going on, and it's very very difficult. The interesting part, I think, I think it's turned a little bit. I I was saying I, I was here. Two months ago, every conversation was Brexit. 75% of it was Brexit. And then we would go, let's get on to our business. I didn't talk Brexit today. This, I've been here for a week. It's early, but. Okay. Uh, not today. <laughs> I've been here for a week. I have not talked Brexit. It's, it's either people are talked out or yep. give, me what, give me the worst. I'm prepared for it. But it's an interesting, I, I, I think. People are ready to move on. And I sense that, by the way, in the deal environment. OK. The, the, the kind of follow-on question from that is, and clearly UK assets look cheap. The question is, are they cheap enough to drive activity? You know, I th people don't like to take risks right before, uh, you know, events happen. It's just, it's, it's almost yep. too quick to say what you do. So um, it's hard, but, but UK assets do look cheap. And the UK economy is great. Look, you, you continue to see where people see free market capitalism and the instincts. Look, the, there's a lot of the world now going to populism and edging toward non-free market capitalist instincts. I'd say the feeling that the UK is one of the leaders in, in you know, just good business principle, good courts, free markets, um, there's, a, there's a gut feeling it's still a great place to do business. So I don't know the, that you won't see deals, but... You know, with October coming up, you might just see people 
waiting just a little longer before they move. But, okay. but they're interested. I think people are interested. Okay, so the potential deal flows there. Um, you focus your business on the Gulf. I'm curious as to how you see that working out right now. Is, do, was that a, with hindsight, is that a good decision? Do you get a feeling that, that, that things are going to work out in the Gulf? I, again, there is now a kind of umbrella of geopolitical tension that is, that is manifesting itself in that market. It's interesting you say we focus. We have 600 people in New York and about you know, 20 yeah. in the Gulf. So focused on the Gulf is, is uh, we ended up with a very good position in the Gulf as a result of things we did there. And it'll just show what you need to do. We, when I started the business, the Gulf was not the center of my strategy. We went over there and we did really hard work for them during the crisis. Yep. And, and we're discreet about it and didn't talk. We don't talk a lot about it. Uh, and it, it just shows uh, what what's effective with clients. Good hard work, pay attention, make sure you're on their side, um, and, uh, and then shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to let you do that, by the way. So I'll talk about the region in general without specifics. Look, I'm bullish on the region. I mean, I, I think when the largest economy says we're going to change direction and we're going to let, we're going to let half the population that never drove, drove, we're going to let music in and entertainment in, and we're going to and I'm talking to Saudi Arabia, yep. and we're going to really try to move our economy into the 21st century. And the demographics of that situation are, are mind-boggling, you know, uh, how young the population is and what they want to accomplish. There is an underlying wealth, and, and I, I just think it's a change in momentum that is it, it's going to happen. Uh, there will be ups and downs along the way, but the direction is exciting. The, the Crown Prince still talks about Aramco. He still talks about the idea of 2021. Are you currently working on the Aramco IPO? Are you, you're going to tell me you don't talk about these things because you just told me that's kind of how the client wants it. But, but, but are you as a firm currently doing any work on that project? It's a long way to ask a question that you know I'm going to say I won't talk about our clients. <laughs> so look, we don't talk about anything we're actively or, or anything we're involved in or a client. But, uh, so I, I, I won't answer that question. But do you think 2021 is a realistic? Do you think, do you think it's going to happen? Well, look, I, th I think it's a goal. And uh, you know, they've stated that as a goal. I think that's public, and we can talk about that. And I, I think it's, um, look, I think they're moving. As I said, there'll be ups and downs along the way. But I think they're heading to achieve this plan, which is to move the economy in different directions. And so I have a lot of faith that, they, that they're going to execute on their goals. You talk about the fact you've got a lot of people in, in New York. You talk about the fact that you've got a few people in the Gulf. But is, but is, but is the focus on the Gulf affecting what you do in the States? I, you're having a, you, you could argue, looking at the tables, that you're having a tough year in the States so far. We're about to wrap up the, the first half. Can, you, can, I, can I point to the Gulf and say your focus there is having an effect on your business in the States? You know, it's a good question. Oh, I don't think so. I think in the States, the M&A business is a very lumpy business. You, uh, you report these numbers, but if you miss one or two large deals that you think you would have been in, or, you, you know, as I said, it's also a 10-year cycle business. One of the most important things you can tell a client is not to do a deal. And, uh, you know, that could result in you not having the quarter you would have wanted, the difference between saying yes or no. Um, as I said, you know, but that's the banker you want. And that's the banker I want for my next 10 years. I want somebody in the room who's willing to say this, you know, hold up, don't do that. It's like I said, you know, when you pick your brain surgeon, you might be careful not to pick someone who is on a one-year bonus pool. Um, it, because you'll end up on the table go, Doc, you know, how big is your mortgage? Am I here for the right reason? So I, I, it's very important to us that we do that. And we don't look at it. Look, we have we've went public. We told everybody, don't think of us on a quarterly basis. I could see an instance where we've had the best quarter, I think, as bankers, because we've given great advice and, and done no revenue. But I hope that doesn't happen, no revenue. But I could see it, and I could think that it might be the most important um, thing we've ever done to lead to a 10-year success record. And that's the business, and you have to execute on that or, or, or it won't work.